two of me, Bob. The two of me. We got this. Oh, hey. Huh. It's getting a little late. I really forgot. I owe you guys some videos. All right. It's my nightly workout. It gets a little intense. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today, by the way, I'm Scott, or Mr. McLeod, as you guys know me. Um, our video, what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be talking about um, Bernoulli's equation. This is for you AP2 guys out there. Bernoulli's equation is sort of a balanced energy equation, right? Whew. Let's get the basic equation out of the way before we get started. Okay, we have some starting pressure, usually the atmosphere, something like that, plus rho. Okay, rho, it's like a weird little p thing. It just means the density of the fluid or whatever we're messing with, times... Um, we'll put one half in front of that. I forgot to do that. One half rho v squared, right? So we have the velocity of the fluid, okay? And remember, that's like the starting velocity. And then we have to add some gravitational potential here. And I'll explain more why this works this way here in a moment. Uh, rho gh. This is the same rho from here. Now remember, this is just water. Rho is just like a thousand... Um, it's just a thousand... Um, kilograms per meter cube, right? So that's a, that's a generic one we like to use. Anyway, we know that has to equal our ending pressure and um, an, our ending rho, we'll say V2 squared. Well, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna make this pressure one and pressure two. Let's put all of our ones over here and twos over there. And plus our rho G H. Now, I specifically want to use this equation for <clears throat> what we're going to be doing in our lab. Um, we're going to be using something like this tank. It's actually going to be something like this. We're trying to drink the Mountain Dew as fast as we can here, but we got that. Okay, we're going to be using something like that, that bottle, and we're going to be starting with some amount of fluid, right? Doesn't matter what it is, just some fluid that's in there. All right, and we're going to imagine that there's a small hole here that's been drilled in. And what we want is we want to predict the path that that fluid's going to take and where it's going to land. Okay, there's a few things we here we need to know. First of all, um, we're going to say that this side is V1, P1, V1, all that. And um, an important thought to think of in this question is our before we're thinking about is up here. And our after we're thinking about is right here when it comes to pressures. So what we can do is we can say that in fact pressure one is equal to pressure two. They're both atmospheric pressure here. So because these are equal, we can get rid of them. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, they're gone. Easy peasy, right? Okay, um, rho g h. Well, we know that rho g h is going to change, and uh, you know what? Just for the sake of argument, instead of H, I'm going to say Y2 for my upper point and Y1 for my down point. So let's change that H to a Y2, okay? And this H to a Y1. Cool. That's all together now. All right, the next step is for us to determine, well, in our beginning situation up here, is our fluid even moving? I mean, it might be moving a little bit as we're losing it, but for the sake of argument, we're going to say it's kind of sort of not moving. So we're going to end up losing this as well. This is going to become zero. And if that doesn't make sense, just think of it as this fluid, this water level, is probably moving, but it's moving at such a small amount that's completely non-important at this point. So we can actually get rid of that. And by the way, remember we got rid of the P2 as well, because we got rid of the pressure on this side. All right, so this is what we're left with. We're left with uh, PGY squared, one half PV squared, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, well, I don't want to get rid of gravity yet, but I can get rid of rho, rho, and rho. Rho is in all three parts of the equation, all three parts of the equation, so we can basically divide it out on both sides. Cool. We got rid of rho. Good for us. All right. So, 
Um, what we're going to do now is let's move g over here. So let's subtract gy2. And what we're going to get is we're going to get um, gy2. Sorry, this is subtracting gy1. gy2 minus gy1. Let's, let's uh, just rearrange it. Okay. So now what we can do is we can pull g out in front of the equation, right? And leave this as y2 minus y1. Well, what's y2 minus y1? Well, that's this location to this location. This is that distance here. And this is why I started with h. The difference between y2 and y1, which is this exit point, is in fact what we can consider h. So we can replace all of this with the letter h for height. Cool. And like I said, we got rid of this on this side, so it simplified a little bit already. Well, let's move one half over here as well, because we're solving for velocity. I wonder how fast it's going here. Okay, so one half on the other side. And then we take the square root. And look at that. We have a solution. We have, for velocity, we have the velocity being the square root of g, or 2gh. Now, this should be super familiar to you guys that took AP1. Like, this is exactly what we did in AP1, right? Um, except we used kinetic energy for moving objects. Um, I'll write it over here in the corner really quickly to show you what I mean. Okay, we're going to finish this problem still, but bear with me for a moment, because I want to show you something really interesting. Okay, so when we're solving our kinetic energy formula, one half mv squared, and we're making that equal to our potential energy, which is not p, <laughs> it's mass times gravity times height, you guys remember that? How high, if I hold something at a certain height and I release it, it comes down at a certain velocity. We can solve for that. Now, let's solve for velocity in this situation. Um, just like I said, remember, this is from the past. Okay, well, we get rid of m on both sides. Um, we can move one half to this side, so we get 2gh. You see where this is going already? v squared equals 2gh. And velocity equals square root of 2 g h. Look at that. The velocity in a kinetic energy formula and the velocity in the, the you know, the balanced kinetic energy formula for fluids, both, both of them are mass independent. There's no mass in here, so we don't care how much things weigh. We don't care about any of that. And uh, they're exactly the same. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because we're just talking about the speed of an object as it's moving. Now, another problem I had in my head, I was thinking, I was like, what if the hole's in the bottom of here? Is that, does that change anything? Absolutely not. It changes nothing at all. You're still going to have the same velocity if you're coming out the bottom, if you're coming out the side here. You didn't just, at the moment after it leaves, you have to start another equation. And in this one, it'd be free fall. This one's like a projectile. So everything stays the same. Now, let's, let's finish solving how we, let's finish, finish figuring out how we would solve this sort of problem. So, let me get rid of our extra stuff over here. And let's just focus on for a moment. Uh, the velocity. Okay, so at this point we have a fluid coming out. We're going to treat this fluid like it's just a projectile in our old kinematic formulas. Okay, we know that, and by the way, I'm going to I'm going to forget all the numbers we got up here, because we did all that just to solve for y, or solve for velocity. Now we're going to say this is y initial, and we'll call this y final. Okay, so we got a height. Well, we know that y final equals y initial, right, plus um, velocity times time. So that's that initial velocity coming out of here. That's this number right here. So let's say v2. Let's plug that in. Um, minus 1 half gt squared. Normally I'd say 1 half at squared, but because we know it's gravity, we know it has to be negative. It's going downward, not upward. Keep that negative. And you can probably already see what you need to do, right? Um, well, probably in these sort of problems, you're probably going to know the height that this is. They're going to tell you, hey, this, uh, the hole is like 10 meters off the ground or something like that. And we're going to have a velocity. So we're going to have a solution for that. And like I said, it's just 2gh. So it'll be this h here, remember, not the h of the entire height, this h here. Okay. And so we're going to have this value. We're going to have this value. We're going to have this this value, 
And the only thing we're going to need to really solve for is time at this point. And once we solve for time, okay, remember, if you know all this, um, if we have two unknowns for time, and one without an exponent, one with an exponent, we kind of know that we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Um, I mean, it might mix it around. We might have a problem where we're looking actually for the, um, the height, like we're trying to find the height. But that's a little complicated. Most likely, we're going to have to find time. And the reason we're going to have to find time is we're going to have to plug it into, you guys remember this from before, we're going to have to plug it into the x, which is this distance right here, equals v t. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And so if we plug time into here, and we plug our initial velocity in the x direction into here, we'll figure out our total distance from the end. Like I said, I didn't give us any numbers. I don't want to give away exactly, you know, every step of this. If you guys are going to do this yourself, we do it in real life because doing it on here on the board is one thing. I think everyone in this, in this class, in any AP2 class, could knock out this equation, these sets of equations. But physically doing the experiment and not getting my floor wet, we're going to put a bucket or a cup on the floor, um, we're going to do this. We're going to make it work. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Anyway... That's physics. Scott's a nerd, as we all know. And uh, I'll see you guys later.